Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back friends. So we talked about the celiac disease introduction and we talked about the causes, uh, signs and symptoms, occurrence and everything related with the celiac diseases. Means the mechanism of action. We also talked about the mechanism of action of the celiac disease as well. Now this is another video lecture which is also regarded with the celiac disease. And in this video lecture we are going to talk about the uh, diagnosis of the celiac diseases. Okay. Now whenever we talked about the diagnosis of the celiac diseases, so um, you know in 2019 means in this present year in 2019 it is very difficult for us to diagnose the celiac disease why because such people are not aware among the physician when such people are not aware among the physician so then it is very difficult for us to diagnose the celiac disease now it can take up to 12 year you know it it can take up to 12 years to receive a diagnosis from the onset of the symptoms and the majority of those effect in the most countries never receive it okay now to find out that if the patient have a celiac disease what actually happen the doctor will first recommend the blood test okay so they will first recommend what they will first recommend the blood test and the doctor will examine that uh, actually what happened the doctor will just see that uh, if the cell are present means those cells means I'm talking about the lymphocyte if the lymphocytes are present and if these lymphocytes are responsible to attack on the intestine or we can say they are, are responsible to attack on the intestine when the gluten is eaten then we says that yes they have what they have celiac disease or the uh, or we can say that in case of celiac disease one of the antibodies thinks that gluten is not important or one of the antibody thinks that gluten is something that will cause a celiac disease okay so there are many several tests used for the celiac disease but one thing more that i must tell you about before starting this diagnosis that whenever the people are free diet whenever the people are not use gluten and although they have celiac disease but they whenever they not eat gluten that it is very difficult for us to diagnose this celiac disease or we can say all the tests performed for the celiac disease so it will it may be fail okay so the first test that we perform for the celiac disease that's about the blood test now what actually happened during this test so let me tell now the first sentence says that it is serologically blood test which are the first line investigation required to make the diagnosis of what to make the diagnosis of the celiac disease okay so people who present a minor damage of the small intestine they may have what they may have zero negative finding so many people with celiac disease often are missed now second line says that in patient with villous atrophy or anti endomycial antibody bodies of the immunoglobulin a type can detect celiac disease with a sensitivity and a specificity of 90% and 99% respectively. Now, both anti-transglutaminase uh, and anti-endomycelial antibody anti means anti-endomycelial antibodies have a high sensitivity to diagnose the people with classic symptoms and complete villous atrophy. Okay, so due to this detection there will be also a chances of what celiac disease but one thing that i must tell you that only 30 to 89 percent of the people uh, with uh, partially villous atrophy and in less than 50 percent of the people who have minor mucosal lesion okay means duodenal lymphocytosis with normal villi now then the next point what say the next point says tissue Transglutamine, uh, tissue transglutaminase modifications gluten peptides into a form or into a form that may stimulate the immune system more effectively I already tell you about this point that uh, what actually happen when the gluten are internalized or whenever they are ingested so then transglutaminase enzyme activated they will modify the gluten peptides into a form that may stimulate the immune system and such immune system will activate the antibodies and lymphocytes that will gradually you know uh, start uh, you know damages the small intestine now these peptides are modified by the transglutaminase in a two way 
डीएमिडेशन और ट्रांस डीएमिडेशन ट्रांस एमिडेशन ओके नाउ देन व्हाट एक्चुअली हैपन आफ्टर दैट ट्रांस ग्लूटामिनेस टेस्ट शुड बी डन फर्स्ट ओके एज इट इज इजियर टू परफॉर्म दैट्स व्हाई वी परफॉर्म दिस टेस्ट बट फर्दर गाइडलाइन सेज दैट टोटल सीरम आईजीए लेवल इज चेकड इन सच सिलिक डिजीज व्हेन IgA deficiency may occur so then it will also show that there will be a celiac disease okay so we also check the IgA antibody in the blood test as well in those people IgG antibody against transglutaminase may be also diagnosed as well now there are three almost there are what there are three types of antibodies which is measured during blood test so the first antibody are the anti reticulin then we have anti gladin and anti endomycelium antibody okay now among them anti uh, you know reticulin antibody testing are very important however it is not accurate enough for routine diagnostic use but serology it may be unreliable uh, in young children with the anti glutamin uh, performing uh, somewhat then we have uh, uh, you know then we have another points which says that uh, serology uh, test are based on the direct amino fluorences uh, means reticulin gliadinin and endomycelium we can detect these kinds of the antibodies and then we can also perform the elisa test uh, you know due to this elisa test we can also identify the gliadinin or tissue transglutaminase enzyme as well okay then other antibody such as anti saccharomyces Uh, antibody occur in some people with celiac disease so we can also you know perform such antibody test as well so it may be present about 5% of those people who do not the blood then second uh, diagnosis that's about the endoscopy now what actually in this case what is actually occur in this case in this case an upper endoscopy uh, with biopsy means an upper endoscopy with biopsy of the duodenum beyond the duodenal bulb or jejunum is performed to obtain multiple samples uh, four to eight samples we can obtain from the duodenum portion means we can obtain a small portion of the muscle in the duodenum during endoscopy not all area may be equally affected if the bi biopsy are taken from the healthy bowel tissue the result will be false negative okay what the result will be false negative even in the same bioptic fragment different degrees of the damages may be present okay so you know most of the people with celiac disease have a small intestine that appear to be normal and endoscopy before the biopsy are examined so one thing you should have to keep in your mind that what actually happened during celiac disease there would be a small intestines appear or there would be a small mass appear in the small intestine now then this line says that biopsy were obtained using metal capsule attached to the section device but before that process what actually happen we will first uh, you know uh, give a capsule to a patient that once the patient swallowed this capsule then we allow the capsule to pass into a small intestine the capsule once the capsule reach to the small intestine once the capsule reach to the small intestine then we perform x ray verification and we see whether the capsule is present or not when the capsule sucked a small collection part of the small intestine then what actually we do we will remove such a capsule by the help of endoscopy often utilized capsule systems you know uh, often utilized capsule systems were the watson capsule and crosby kugrel capsule so this capsule Uh, are usually utilized and the capsule named were watson capsule and crosby kugrel capsule because such capsule were discovered by these two scientists uh, this method can e uh, usually replace what this method usually replace the you know optic endoscopy which carry a higher sensitivity and lower frequency of uh, what and lower frequency of uh, errors then next point says that uh, capsule endoscopy allows identification of the typical mucosal changes observed in the celiac disease but one thing that i must tell you about it has a lower sensitivity compared to regular endoscopy and histology 
you know capsule endoscopy is therefore you know capsule endoscopy is therefore not primary diagnostic tool for celiac disease why because you know uh, it is uh, however it can uh, use to detect the T cell lymphocyte ulcerative zoolitis and adenocarcinoma and refractory or complicated celiac diseases so you know a capsule endoscopy is not usually used for that purposes and then we have another test which we are usually perform for the celiac disease that's about the genetic test so now what act uh, what actually happen in this test usually the people which have celiac disease they carry both hla dq means human leukocyte a dq2 and dq8 genes okay but but one thing that i must tell you about 25 to 30 percent of the population with have the same genes but it does not mean that such people will have the celiac disease okay people 95 percent you know one thing that i must tell you around five percent of those people who have the celiac disease do not have typically hla dq or hla d8 alleles so as i told you and in the, at the first point i told you that celiac, uh, celiac disease during celiac disease hla dq8 and dq2 uh, genes will be present but around five percent of those people who have celiac disease do not have hla and dq8 hla dq8 uh, or dq2 alleles so it is very difficult for us to diagnose means such kinds of the genes okay but uh, one thing that i must tell you about that uh, you should have to keep one thing uh, in your mind only 25 to 30 percent of the population with have the same genes okay but it doesn't mean that it will be caused with the celiac diseases now antibody testing may be combined with hla testing if the diagnostic is unclear means we should also perform the hla testing as one why because when the antibody testing are not confirmed with uh, not confirmed then we will perform this hla diagnosis test transglutaminase enzyme and this ema testing are the most sensitive serum antibody test but as a negative no but as a negative hla dq type excludes the diagnosis of the celiac disease testing also for hla dq8 maximize the sensitivity of the negativity you know the product of the value as well as well however widespread use of the hla typing to rules out celiac disease is not uh, currently recommended then we have another uh, test which are usually performed that's about the screening test okay so you know uh, in united kingdom the national institute of the health and clinical excellence recommended different test for the celiac diseases so such tests are called screening test okay and the the, the test which are involved in the screening these are let me tell you these are the fetigue osteomalacia periphery nepro, uh, nephropathy and ataxia abdominal and gastrointestinal symptoms filtering growth unexplained weight loss or iron so all these you know all these disease should be screened so screen test is that test in which we can check out the diseases mean we can check out the fetigue osteomalacia we can check out the peripheral uh, neuropathy we can check out the uh, peripheral neuropathy and uh, ataxia we can check out the abdominal or get uh, gastrointestinal symptoms filtry uh, growth uh, unexpected weight loss uh, or iron down syndrome and turner syndrome uh, we can also check the vitamin b12 or folate deficiency we can check severe mouth ulcers uh, we can check type 1 diabetes and we can also check the fertility problem as well moreover we can also check during this test we can check chronic fatigue syndrome irritable bowel syndrome and dermatitis her pto forms so all these are called what whenever we check all these diseases so we call that screening test okay so screen test is also recommended for the celiac disease identifications then we have other diagnostic tests due to which we can identify the celiac disease although all these are very important but the other diagnostic tests for the celiac diseases you know at the time of the diagnosis further investigation may be performed to identify the complications such as you know let me show you 
full blood count and iron studies means iron deficiency folic acid and vitamin b2 12 deficiency hypoglycemia okay means low level of the calcium often due to decreased vitamin d level then thyroid function test we usually perform the thyroid function which which may be requested during blood test to identify hypothyroidism which is more common in the people with celiac disease okay then we also uh, perform another test osteopenia and osteoporosis you know osteopenia and osteoporosis is also recommended but it is mildly and severely reduced bone mineral density and are often present in uh, people with celiac diseases and it is investigated uh, to measure bone density and it is also investigated uh, uh, bone density may be performed at a diagnosis such as a uh, dual energy x-ray uh, absorb uh, absor petrometry scanning to identify the risk of the fracture and need for the bone protection medi medications okay so that's all about the diagnosis of the celiac diseases then the final uh, then next slide says the treatment of the celiac disease you know we have just two options to treat the celiac disease although there is no medication or no cure that can stop the celiac disease but still we have two options the first option that we have that's about gluten free diet once we take gluten free diet for the two years okay so when we get gluten free diet or whenever we not usually take the gluten food for two years during this time the previous damage in the intestine might be recovered okay they must uh, you know patient must remain gluten free diet for the rest of their life as well due to which their disease will be treated on the other hand the second option we have the gene therapy during this treatment you know the second option we have the gene therapy now in gene therapy what we do in this uh, uh, the treatment we will remove the defective genes when we remove the defective genes so then the you know there will be a less chances of the celiac disease will happen but if still we talked about the treatment or the medication of the celiac disease uh, so the first uh, you know uh, medicine that we usually give to the celiac uh, patients that's about the high proteins high calories high iron folic acid drugs vitamin b12 a k and d as a water soluble vitamin b means thymine riboflavin niacine folate we also provide calcium zinc magnesium and fibers all these uh, you know drugs should be given to the celiac diseases to just control the celiac disease but whenever we want to treat the celiac disease we should have to free diet with the gluten for the rest of the life and for two year so that's all about the celiac diseases okay thank you so much for your listening i hope you understand about that video lecture if you like the video so make sure to hit the like button share the video and also subscribe the channel for more videos lecture like that thank you so much take care